Hey then everyone, Juan Romero here from Switch Watch. I've got another review for you today, a game called Grim Valor, a game which has mobile roots, which some of you may scoff at and turn your nose up at, you know? But before you ride it off, before you do that, hold on just a little bit further. We're gonna break this one down and see whether it's worth your hard-earned cash or not. I'm gonna start with the story as a familiar tale. In fact, if you've played Dark Souls or Blasphemous recently, then this will all feel quite familiar in kind of a comforting way. For me, at least it did anyways. Tasked with discovering the Lost King, your quest quickly takes a turn for the worst. You're cast into the abyss, a place no one wants to be. Here, you have few friends. The vendor talks to you, but only wants to sell you stuff, supply and demand and all that. And I always wondered with these vendors, you know, how do they make that much money? Because there's very few characters at times in these games. Is there a line of warriors just waiting to take part in these games, you know, buying their stuff? I don't know. My imagination is kind of running away with me. I digress. You meet a few characters along the way. You have a few conversations. But the game really does not hook you with the story. But that's OK. Let me tell you why. Let's move on to the gameplay. Now this is a game, as I said, it made its debut on mobile platforms. I'll be the first to admit I don't pay much attention to games on iOS or Android for that matter. For me, playing without buttons takes away a lot of the enjoyment and I just find it difficult to be accurate. Sure, you can get pads and add them to your phone nowadays and things are a lot better, but it's just not my thing and that's just a personal preference though. However, put the game on the Switch and all of a sudden I'm ready to give it a shot and boy was I glad I did. As you begin, you choose a female or male character. This is a 2.5D hack and slash action platformer and while this is its description, it's so much more than that. The more I played, the more I became totally enthralled. Now, it may sound a little bit hyperbolic. There are plenty of platformers around and very good ones at that. But something about this feels so damn excellent to play. Imagine, if you will, the monsters in Dark Souls, but in a side-scrolling platformer. Then imagine your character as a sword-wielding badass who can not only jump, double jump, and dash across screen so quickly and effortlessly, you'd think they were Superman at times. Not only that, but you can run up walls to reach hidden areas and perform some cool acrobatics. This guy's more like a gymnast. That's just the movement. But then the combat feels fluid, simple, yet satisfying. Hitting Y will unleash sword swipes, but here you can use your dash move to continuously evade enemies' moves, striking them, avoiding, and then striking again in this dance of destruction. Hit X and you'll unleash a devastating move, as long as you have soul energy collected from your fallen foes. I recently reviewed One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 and commented on how thrilling aerial combat is to me. Here you swipe your sword when a flying enemy comes on the screen towards you and you can end up with many seconds of thrashing your sword wildly and completing what looks like a beautiful aerial dance, getting more airtime the more you swipe and dash. I freaking love that. The level enemies serve as your food and drink to collect soul shards, which keeps your special move meter topped up. And with each enemy slain, you level up more. And as you level up, the game handily lets you know that your meat has been filled up, find a checkpoint and you can take a rest and then assign points to your character to improve vigor, savagery, mastery or focus. Simple stuff but keeps you glued and invested to your character and from time to time you'll meet a mid-level boss where all fun to play and be a good challenge too. There are times when you're hunted by some big ass beasts and they'll need to be taken down. They often guard the treasure that you've just collected like a trinket, which you can add to a free slot to get certain perks, such as reducing burn duration, which comes in properly handy in some of the levels where enemies fire fire projectiles at you. Fail and back to the checkpoint, but you never lose too much progress, so not too much of a burden. Now thus far, I'm having a great time, but then I realized this isn't just an action platformer, but a Metroidvania, or as the dev calls it, a Soulvania. You see, as you look at the map, there is a percentage of completion with each level within each act, and you can only 100% each 
If you've looked in every nook and cranny of the level, and it pays to do so, you'll find treasure in the form of relics. Relics can be used at the forge, and there are a bunch of these points where you'll come across a forge, vendor, and also activate fast travel, so you can travel between areas within the act. When you reach the vendor, you're able to upgrade your mending flask, which is essential, so you can use it multiple times to heal in battle when you need health restoration at your most vulnerable and you can fill it up again at the rest points kind of like Dark Souls then. Handily at the forge, you can forge a number of items such as your primary and secondary weapon, the secondary weapon used in a much more powerful attack. There is even armor to be made to offer more protection for your character. And as you progress, you unlock new moves too, which will allow you to explore new areas, such as being able to break through the floor on certain levels using your secondary new attack move. I found myself just wanting to explore as much of the map as possible and as much of the axe in full before being ready to take on the boss. And you can choose when you want to do that. And I love how this is depicted on the map through a simple number out of 100 and how clear that is in showing you what needs to be done i.e there's also a part that tells you how much treasure still needs to be found and often you're just going to want to go back to pick up every single piece of treasure you can so you can buy the sweet weapons and upgrades after all is said and done this adventure will consume you for about 12 to 15 hours honestly i couldn't put it down and then for us switch owners we have the pleasure of game plus mode which has been added specifically to this platform to add extra challenge and difficulty. Now you may be thinking where are the negatives within this gameplay and I would say a little bit more depth wouldn't have gone amiss, the maps being a little bit larger could have been good and slashing can become repetitive after a while, I would have liked for there to have been more moves and combos but you can make the argument also that had they done that it may have taken away from its pure simplicity. In terms of the audio, the audio here is pretty good, each act having a really good atmosphere where it feels like you're in a terrible place full of nasty monsters looking to take you out. The sound effects are pretty good too, and I would have liked voice narration, but of course that would have meant the game probably being more expensive. Visually is where I think the game does show its mobile roots a tad. I would have liked more detail in the backgrounds and the animations, I would have liked them to have been a bit stronger. Sometimes it seems like the character's floating along the ground, which I've never liked in games, rather than his footsteps actually touching the ground with each step. However, the enemy designs are cool, especially the bosses. And you know, look, at the end of the day, it looks fine for the price. In terms of value, Grim Valor is going to get you around 12 to 15 hours of gameplay if you explore every area. I think for a game like this, it has the perfect length, but if there was a sequel with a grander scope, I'll certainly be buying it right away. For $12.99 or £12 in the UK, I think the price is pitched perfectly. Not quite AAA indie price, but not too cheap either. It's good value for money based on the enjoyment you get. Bear in mind, if you do own a smartphone, you can download the trial version of this game to see if it suits you, to see if you like it, both on iOS and Google Play. And the full version on mobile is $6.49. So you're thinking, why is it double the price on the Nintendo Switch? Well, of course, they've added the Game Plus mode, which is extra development. And, you know, end of the day for me, you got those buttons, that's worth the extra money, in my humble opinion. Let's take a look at the verdict. Grim Valor, for me, was a complete surprise. Sure, it's a port of a mobile game, but don't let that put you off because it's found its perfect home. If you like action, exploration, boss fights with a dash of platforming and enjoyed games such as Dark Souls, Blasphemous, then this is a must for your collection and is pure, solid fun. An eight out of 10 ladies and gentlemen thank you so much if you're still watching you're still supporting and you are a true switch watcher if you are then leave a like for us we'd really appreciate that you can see my voice is running out and that's because of the amount of work that we put into this channel i really do you know and we as a team really do appreciate it if you want to leave us a comment let us know what you think of this game is this one that you're looking to pick up or is there just too many games on sale right now to even think about another game if you did enjoy this review, then, you know, and you're new here, 
hit that subscribe button and that bell notification and that's for existing subscribers too hit that bell because otherwise you're not going to know when our new videos go live and we release quite a lot of them yeah so sunday we do bargains letting you know the best games to pick up i'll put the bargains video at the end of this one so you can check out that massive spring sale where we've chosen 30 absolute gems of games so make sure you check that out we'll see you over there as a team where jordan james and i are voicing that list take care everyone we'll see you on the next one